In this video, you'll learn how to position an image or any other elements or widget behind a section separator. I'll also show you how to make your layout fully responsive across all screen sizes. All right, let's get started. All right, so we have a pretty simple layout here. I uh, would just have a heading, a little bit of text here, and then this image on uh, this two column layout. And we basically just wanna move the image down here and then position it uh, behind the clouds. So the clouds overlap the image and it looks like it's sort of rising from the clouds. Now, before we get started, let me give you one tip uh, of something to make this a lot easier for positioning the image. You wanna make sure that your section settings, you don't want the layout set uh, where the height is either fit to screen or a minimum height, because this is gonna cause alignment issues with your image as the screen becomes responsive, the image is gonna slide up or slide down from the bottom where you want it aligned. So it's much better to have uh, your height set to default and then control the spacing using inner padding in your section here. So first things first, let's get our image positioned where we want it to be. And then we'll get the cloud to overlap it. And then we'll worry about fixing some of the issues with the responsive layout. So in order to do that, we're gonna to need to set this image to position absolute. Now, when I position images absolutely, I like to have them in their own row. And let me just give you a demonstration of why that is. So we'll just quickly set this to position absolute. And I'm just gonna line it up on the bottom here. And let's hit, hit update and we'll just, uh, so let's check the responsiveness for ourselves. So as we resize it, you can see it looks fine until it hits the spot right here, which is the tablet breakpoint. And that's where these side-by-side -side columns stack on top of each other. And the image basically just drops out of the frame. And so now the negative positioning is just dragging it down. And that's kind of a cool effect if you want to do that. Um, but you should just know going in that it's not gonna be as easy to align the image along the bottom and just have it move smoothly along the bottom of our section if you try to do it inside columns. So we're gonna go back here and we're gonna drag this image. Let's turn it back and do defeat default positioning and we'll drag it into its own section here. And you'll notice uh, that this container is actually full width. And so that's actually gonna make it difficult to put our image where we want. So unless you wanna have your image centered all the time, uh, we're gonna turn it to position in line, we actually want our image to be over here. So we're gonna to go to our image settings and we'll go to advanced positioning. And we're gonna set the width to inline auto. And you see it just shrinks the container block. Now the, the container is only as wide as the image itself. And then we can get to the business of positioning it. So let's go to position absolute. And we'll just undo the positioning that I had set earlier. And you can see what we need to do is we need to basically move it down here. And with absolute positioning, you can physically drag the element exactly where you want it. So that's pretty much the bottom of our, our row as it is right now. Um, but obviously we need to make a little bit of space here because it's overlapping our heading. So let's go back to our section settings and we'll go to advanced. And we're just gonna add some extra padding at the bottom. So we'll try 250 pixels and we'll click update and go back to our image go back to positioning and we're just gonna dial it in. So let's try minus 200 pixels. That's not quite right. So I'm gonna drag it down and it looks like 260 is gonna end up being the right amount here. And the offset to the right looks okay for now. Um, the thing you want to make sure that you're getting right is if you're aligning the image to the bottom, you wanna make sure that it's set to bottom and not top. Uh, we want the offset to be relative to the bottom. And if you're aligning it to the right side, you want the offset probably to be relative to the right side, not the left. So just make sure you selected the correct boxes in here. And for now, um, we definitely want the vertical offset to be set by pixels because our padding is set by pixels. And we're basically overcoming the inner padding uh, to align the image on the bottom. So we're gonna keep that set to pixels. And maybe later for responsive purposes, we can set the horizontal offset to something like percentile. But for now, we'll just leave it out as it is. And let's click update. Okay, so we've got our image positioned where we want it. And now we just need to make sure that these clouds overlap uh, our image. So let's go back to the front end and I'll show you how to do that. So what we need to adjust, and we're gonna use some custom CSS for this, is it's called the Z index. So if you think about the x-axis and the y-axis, vertical axis, 
uh, if those are the two dimensions, then the third dimension is the Z index, which is what comes out towards you. And it's basically a stacking order of elements on a document. So it determines what overlaps what if they're positioned in the same space. Now, all of these have a, currently have a Z index of auto. And so the reason that the image here is stacked on top of the other of, of the separator is because if elements have the same Z index, then whichever element is lower on the page overlaps the higher on the page element. And I mean, physically in the HTML document, in the code, whichever one is lower down will overlap the other one. Now, I think you're probably saying, well, wait a minute, the separator is lower than where the image was positioned. I saw the image was up here, the separator is down there. Why isn't the separator overlapping the image? Let's go take a look in the code. So if we just right click on our separator here and click inspect, and we go to our element or shape, it's like the whole shape divider layer, you will see that it's actually the first element inside our section, inside our element or section here. And then it's actually being positioned absolutely down at the bottom. But in terms of the raw HTML, it's actually at the top, which is why it's, it's underneath everything else. So in order to fix this, basically we just need to change the Z index of our row separator so it gets pulled further out on the page and overlaps our other elements. Now, before we do that, we're actually gonna wanna assign a CSS class to our, to our section here. And the reason we wanna do that is so that we don't apply these CSS rules to every separator on your site. We just wanna apply it to certain separators. So we're gonna add a class. And anytime you want uh, a section separator to overlap an image, you can basically just assign this class to the separator and it will apply the same rules that we're about to write. So let's go back and we're gonna to go to our section settings here. And I've already added a class and you can name it whatever you want, but I've just called it raised separator. And we're gonna target this class on the front end in our CSS. Now, where should you put your custom CSS? Well, if you have the pro version of Elementor, I would lean towards putting it in the custom CSS. If you go to site settings and you go to the uh, global custom CSS file, I would put it there so that it only gets injected in your Elementor layouts and won't be added code, unnecessary code on pages that don't use Elementor. Uh, but don't worry, we're only writing basically one line of CSS. So uh, if you don't have the pro version, we can just put it right in our WordPress customizer on the front end. So we're gonna go back to the front end. Let's refresh and we'll open our customizer and let's find the code that we wanna target. So we're gonna right click here and inspect. And let's go to our section. So here's the entire section. And if you go over here, you'll see that the class that we just named it, raise separator has been added to our section. So we want to target only that class and basically wanna target, we wanna target the element or shape divider inside our section of class raise separator. So here's how we're gonna write that rule. So we're gonna to go to the WordPress customizer, additional CSS, and we'll just start writing our rules. So we're gonna be targeting an element or section, that's a class. And you can see it's section class element or section, and it's also class raise separator. So we're not gonna put a space, we'll put another period because they're in the same element. So element or section that's also class raise separator, and we're gonna target, what we're actually targeting is the uh, element or shape class. class that is inside the elementor section raise separator. So now we can write our rule. So we'll add our brackets. And the rule is really simple. All we gotta do is go Z index two. That's it. And now if you look, boom, our image is now behind the cloud. So let's click publish and save that code. And we'll get to work on getting the responsive issues corrected. So. Let's just check what this looks like in responsive mode. So we just have this like one trouble spot here where it overlaps the text and then it shrinks down automatically and it looks pretty good the rest of the way, but we just have to fix that one little bit. So there's a couple ways we could fix this. We could either shrink the image so it takes up less space down here or we can add more padding to the bottom, which drops the image down, but then we'd have to adjust the positioning too. 
or we can add some padding uh, below our text. And that seems like the easiest option. So let's just give that a shot on the front end. So we'll go here and let's go into responsive mode and it's, it was tablet mode where it was causing us problems. So we'll just go to our settings here, advanced and padding. We already have a little bit of padding there, but let's add a little bit more. So instead of 60 pixels, we can try 100 pixels instead and see if that fixes it. And we can go back to the front end and go back through the little trouble area. And that actually looks perfect. It Right at the break point, it drops down and never overlaps the text. Uh, but if you don't want this big gap that you get in here in the mobile mode, you can either adjust the padding again and bring it back in the mobile view, or we could do something else. So let's try one other way that we can fix the responsive. So the other responsive fix we could try here is instead of adding padding under the text here, we could actually just drop the image further down and change the vertical offset. So let's try that. So we'll go to the image settings here and positioning. And I already dragged it down by accident, but let's, this looks like a good number. So let's try, let's just try minus 340 pixels. And we'll do the same thing on the mobile view. We'll do minus 340. And let's click update and we'll just, oop, got a double minus there. Minus 340. And we'll just check this out on the front end. So breakpoint looks good. And then it just kind of shrinks down into the cloud. All right, that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and please make sure you like and subscribe to get all our latest content. All right, thanks. Have a great day.